Hi everyone, Machine Media welcomes you to today's topic and awareness and it will focus on Nigerian head of states or head of government or president foreign policies. As you are aware, Nigeria is a congregation of three nations merged as one nation and despite this long and coexistence, the three nations, the three countries, has remained individualistic, tribalistic, sentimental in accordance with their religion, their hatred to one another, their inability to coexist and adopt nationality in their behaviors, in their leadership, in everything they do. As a result, each president, each head of state, gears towards satisfying his tribalistic tendencies, religious tendencies, and economic advantage to their region. It is on rare occasion that the leaders have been neutral in their governance. Today we are going to focus on the foreign policy of General Muhammad Buhari. But before we continue, we will recap what we did last eight days. Here we focus on Obasanjo's first force that shocked Britain. If you have not been able to watch that video, we plead you try to ask you to do so because that will give you an insight of what we are saying and why various governments, various heads of states are putting their interests where they think benefits them. A passenger, like it was stated then, centered his foreign policy on Africa. In the past, the, the former Prime Minister of Nigeria, Afawa Belewa, between 1960 to 1966, and the military head of state, General Gowan, between 1966 to 1975, focused their foreign policy and interest to protect Britain and Britain alone. There was no interest for Nigeria, except General Gowan, Yakubu Gowan, who declared war against the Biafrans and the Igbos in general. Then, having looked at the foreign policy of General Olusegun Obasanjo, which centered on Africa, the struggle to liberate African countries from British rule and domination, then which benefited countries like Zimbabwe, South Africa, Angola, and Mozambique at gained independence during the time of Olusegun Obasanjo or Olusegun Obasanjo who also contributed immensely funding and sponsoring the ANC and other groups that later had their independence. Today it is the turn of General Buhari. We look at the foreign policy and where his interest focuses. Nigeria, as it is stated earlier, is divided into three. The Niger Coast country or colony or British protectorate that existed between 1885 to 1963, when Nigeria had its republic. Then we have Lagos colony through Yoruba, British colony that existed between 18, 
1997 to 1966, again, when Nigeria had its republic. Then we have Northern Caliphate British Protectorate that existed between 1906 to 1963, again, when Nigeria had its independence. Each of these three colonies or protectorates had their emblem, their flag, everything. We are different, their way of lives different, their religion different, their culture different, until the time Britain amalgamated them or merged them together for their own administrative convenience and also for the resources and revenue they were to get from all these three countries merged together. Then we look at today the foreign policy of the man from Northern Caliphate British Protectorate. We have looked at the Obasanjo's foreign policy who came from or who is from Lagos colony Yoruba, British colony that was a mice or submise or amalgamated by the British governor Walter Egerton in 1906, of which the Niger Coast country and the, the Lagos colony became one country in the southern part of what is called today Nigeria. They have different maps, different everything as different countries before they were merged together. Their policies as represented by what General Obasanjo's foreign policy represented. And this time we are going to focus on the foreign policy of General Buhari from the Caliphate Emirate that existed as a country between 1906 to 1966. We are also the first Nigerian Prime Minister, late Tafawa Pelewa, came from, and also the same protectorate where the General Yakub Gowan came from. They all protected the interest of Britain and had their relationship with the Arab countries. So we are going to look at again that is present policy. If it will gear towards the Arab countries as their previous predecessors from the Northern British Protectorate, we will look at them critically now and this will begin. When you look at the foreign policy of General Buhari, we see a different entity and what he has in mind. The center of his foreign policy appeared to be distinct from that of General Olusegu Obasanjo. Today, the foreign policy of General Buhari is centered on the organization of Islamic cooperation interest, support for Palestine independence, and the economic development and cooperation with Arab nations. That is what the foreign policy focused on, and we will try to prove this through the various publications and the what the Nigerians themselves think about it. Nigerians are worried and have been asking questions. We will look at one of the questions they asked currently after the president attended the United Nations General Assembly meeting in 20, 
until we had the president focused on Palestine and social media. But we are only interested on the issue of Palestine. On 24th of September 2019, Premium Times reported that on the international scene, that is paragraph 24, Mr. President, the United Nations has new opportunities to take the load on issues that continue to cloud the prospect of international peace and prosperity. A, the right of Palestinian people to have their own country free of occupation. Mr. President, the international community has spoken from Resolution 242 of 1967 to the present day on the rights of the Palestine people to have and live in peace in their own land. Like Obasanjo did in 1977 to 1979, where he spoke and helped the African countries as an indigenous African leader and indigenous Nigerian leader. He focused on the self-determination of African countries controlled by Britain to ensure that they regain their independence. That means his interest is on African soil and also as an indigenous president. However, President Buhari, who considered himself as a Fulani man and a Muslim, and whose interest has always focused on the protection of the Muslim religion, protection of the Fulani's, strengthening the policies of Organization of Islamic Cooperation, Arab League, and all other Arab interests within and outside Nigeria. He was emphatic on the freedom of Palestinians. However, in Nigeria, during this time, there are two agitators. The Biafran agitators who want to restore the lost Biafran nation between 1967 to 1970, and also the Odudua nation that want to go back to their original country before they were amalgamated first with the Niger Coast Protectorate or Southern Protectorate. And eventually in 1914, they were also amalgamated jointly with groups and the countries that are alien to them. They have different culture, they have different religion, subjugated, they are denied of their rights, they are also discriminated against in development, in treatment, in political appointment. So they decided that continuing their struggle will be better off than being in an alien amalgamation that does not benefit and articulate growth and development for the nation after years of independence. The struggle that emerged soon after they were amalgamated in 1914 had continued to death. But however, the government of Buhari left these problems and decided to focus on the independence of Palestine that is a Muslim nation and also had been against the State of Israel that is a Christian nation 
has relationship with the Western world and as such refused to recognize the state of Israel just like every other Arab nation. Then the government of Buhari has used the same step to be against the people of Biafra. Biafran agitation has been weighed and treated in a manner that is against the international law, against international humanitarian law, against the international self-determination law. All these are what the government of Buhari has adopted to suppress the indigenous people of Biafra agitation for self-determination in Nigeria and also the Yoruba agitation for the restoration of Odudua nation as it was before the amalgamation. It has become a regular request by President Muhammad Buhari since he assumed office in 2015. His request did not stop in 1919. In 1921, he made similar request to ensure that Palestine, on paragraph 56 of his speech at the United Nations General Assembly of 21st September 2021, Nigerian President General Buhari, expressing his opinion, stated justice, fairness, and equity in respect of Palestinian people was his plea and the policy he tried to express at the United Nations General Assembly meeting. He wanted the world to acknowledge that there was no justice and the fairness and equity in terms of the Palestinians if their state and uh, an independence was not granted to them. He continued that the question in the Middle East is long standing and gives cause for concern. Nigeria encourages Israel and the Palestine to rearrange in dialogue based on relevant UN resolutions and initiatives. But back in Nigeria, he had indigenous people of Biafra wanting a separate independent nation from Nigeria. Nigeria was an amalgamation that had no treaty, that had no referendum and the approval of the people for them to be amalgamated as one nation. Nigeria has also another agitating group to confront those who are agitating for Odudua state. These are the problems within Nigeria by the time he went to United Nations in September 21st, 2021 to ask that the Israel and the Palestine should engage in dialogue based on relevant UN resolutions and initiatives. But back to Nigeria, he is using military, using police, using DSS to kill those who are agitating for separate countries and their supporters. He has never remembered that there is or there should be dialogue based on relevant UN resolutions and initiatives. Several times he has been called to use the same proposal he made to encourage Israel and the Palestine to engage in dialogue based on relevant UN resolutions and the initiatives. He has refused to accept those on the part of 
Nigerian agitators. President Buhari does not only go to the United Nations to solicit for Palestinian separate state as an independent state, but he also goes to Organization of Islamic Cooperation Countries, OIC, in Saudi Arabia, where he supports the independent state for Palestine. But he does not want to hear agitation for separation of Nigeria, people going back to how they were before the British amalgamation, before the British independence of 1960. In 2016, he made this plea before the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, OIC, in Saudi Arabia, and sternly declared that Nigeria was behind the Palestine and the Arab countries and the Islamic world to ensure Palestine had their own independence. On February 28, 2016, the Premium Times reported the meeting between Nigerian President General Buhari and Kwata Eme Amin bin Hamid Al Tani. This meeting also focused on the issue of Palestine. Buhari has been persistently and regularly seeking for the independence of Palestine. And because it has not come to fruitfulness, he has been against all those in Nigeria who are seeking for the separation of Nigeria, for the independent states of Biafra and independent state of Odudua Republic. He has been very, very stern and bitter, and he ends all these requests and the agitations with madness, killings, while going to the Arabian countries to seek, solicit, and fight for independence of Palestine. On the issue of Palestine, individual cases are different. The Palestine issue is different. The African issue is different. The Dudua issue is different. But he is using Palestine and Israeli issues to measure the agitation for Biafra, agitation for Odudua, especially against Biafra. Continuing on the February 28, Buhari media spokesman Femi Adesina stated that our support for various Security Council resolutions restoring and respecting 1960 seven boundaries with Jerusalem as capital of Palestine is firm and unshaken. In continuation, Femi Adesina explained that Buhari's stance on the Israeli-Palestine conflict is similar with that of most countries of the world, including the European Union and Qatar is believed to be one of the major backers of Palestine, including backing Hamas, which govern Gaza. And on the other hand, Hamas has been regarded as Islamic terrorist organization. However, Femi Adesina indicated that Buhari want to use this meeting to express and assure Qatar that we, the Nigerians, will stand side by side with you until our brothers and the sisters in Palestine achieve their desired objectives, he said. In a further development, we refer back to Harris Reporters New York of 
July 9, 2021, also on the issue of President Buhari's address supporting self-determination of Palestine and others in 2015. That is a flashback. On this very date, reporters stated that Buhari spoke at the United Nations Summit on Sustainable Development acknowledged platform which was used to mark its 70th anniversary, which held from 25th to 27th September 2015 in New York and convened as a high-level plenary meeting of the General Assembly. In his speech, the Nigerian leader made a case for Palestinian people before the world's governing body to be given their alienable right of becoming an independent country without further delay or obstacle. We need to remind ourselves of the principles that led to the foundings of the United Nations. Among those are peaceful coexistence and the self-determination of peoples. In this context, Mr. President, self-determination of Palestine people and those of us in Sahara region, those nations that have been energized by United Nations have qualified for these alienable rights, must now be assured of it without any further delay or obstacle. The international community has come to fill its hope on the resolve of the Palestinian issue through the two states solution which recognizes the legitimate right of these states to exist in peace and security, Buhari said. He also reminded the UN that other African countries who had the kind of agitation of becoming sovereign nations should be granted such that there was no excuse or reason to delay them, which he said to the applause of the participant. Amongst African countries that are seeking for independent or separate nations included the Western Sahara, the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic, Ambazadia, Biafra Nation, and Oduduwa Nation. These are among the prominent that are seeking for self-determination amongst others. However, I will really state before I continue this article. It is stated again that he, Mr. President, said also that other African countries who had the kind of agitation of becoming sovereign nations should be granted such as there was no excuse or reason to delay them, which he said to the applause of the participants. That is very, very important. Well, continue. This is why there is no more excuses or reasons to delay the implementation of the long list of the security and the resolutions of these questions. Neither do we have the moral right to delay any people, their freedom, or condemn them indefinitely to attacation and blockade, the Nigerian president said. However, the reporter newspaper continued, this is six years since Buhari became the president of Nigeria and has been vehemently opposing the agitation of self-determination of ethnic nationalities, using brute force to suppress the leaders and the followers of separatist groups. In the last few weeks, the Nigerian government has arranged the abduction of Namdekano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, from Kenya, to Nigeria for leading the separation or separatist struggle. 
for the people of Southeast. In the same vein, the operatives of Department of State Security Services, DSS, violently invaded and raided the residence of Yoruba separatist leader, Sunday Imoho, killing two people in the process. What in the Kano's home, 28 people were murdered or shot dead by Nigerian security forces. Comparing this with President Buhari's address to the United Nations and his allegiance to ensure that the separatist movements and those who are seeking for separate sovereign nations are granted such nations without hesitation. But coming back home, he will do otherwise. That is another crime against humanity, against the United Nations for being before them to say a different thing that they should grant the independent sovereign states to the numerous list of African nations before them. But coming back home, he killed those he listed their names in the United Nations meeting. In another publication of Punch newspapers of 28 July 2021, stated the international community has come to fill its hopes on the resolve of the Palestinian issue through the two states solution which recognizes the legitimate right of these states to exist in peace and security, Harry had said. Then, Olasho Ojo, the coordinator of legal affairs, Yoruba self-determination movement worldwide, including Sunday Iboho's arrest and Olasopo's Ojo has faulted the federal government's opposition to the creation of a Yoruba nation. He lamented that the president, Major General Muhammad Buhari, retired, supported the self-determination of Palestine, but ordered the arrest of a Yoruba nation's agitators. Olasopo said this during the Punch Online program, the round table on Wednesday. Well, the motive behind today's exposition is to show that the foreign policy of General Buhari is one to protect the interest of the Arab nations, especially the self-determination of Palestine and Sahari Arab Republic. Then the question is why did General Buhari come back to Nigeria after 2015? He changed his mind. Why did he decide to kill Biafran agitators who reminded him of what he needed to do? Who advised him? Why did he kill? The killing has amounted to a crime against humanity, violations of human rights, and the torture. Massive media is now using this opportunity of exposition to ask individuals to judge the address of President Buhari at the United Nations Assembly and his activities and killings in the Southeast when he came back. Was this hypocrisy? Was this deceiving the United Nations? Was this to show that what he has done or what he has said or his address at the United Nations was a mistake? Or does he believe that the United Nations cannot act against him? Before we conclude, we will ask our listeners, both in Africa, in Europe, America, and Asia, to analyze this, to compare this with what the president has said, his type of policy, his type of person, and what he has done. Then with this, you will conclude if what he said and what his policies are is what his actions are. With this, we come to the end of this program. We ask God to bless you. Thank you. We ask you to subscribe. When you subscribe, you are empowering us to continue this program.
Therefore, we ask you to share our videos to your friends and well-wishers. Ask them to subscribe, share them, and uh, indeed, God will bless you all. Thank you very much. Don't forget to give us thumbnail and leave your comments. Please, this remains also historical to some of us who are no longer evaluate the reports, evaluate every comment, evaluate every statement made by the president, President Buhari, evaluate them and charge him with what he said and his actions. With today's we come to the end of the program. We ask you to subscribe once again and God bless you all. Bye. Bye.